So here we are. Why did I even watch it in the first place? Ah, okay, oh, no, I know, it's terrible, I'm terrible, I'm such a terrible conservative. I'm half convinced I'm not even a conservative, honestly, I'm more of a right-wing libertarian. But listen, not the point. Okay, so before I became a conservative, before I rediscovered Christianity, before all of that, I was obsessed with the pilot. I was seriously obsessed with pilot. Back in my D-Gen days, back when I would sit on the couch all day and eat junk food and wasn't onto self-improvement and I didn't care about any of that. Back then, I loved this series. I loved the pilot, I loved everything that they did with it, all the promotion. Now, I was waiting for this series to come out for a year, which doesn't seem like very long compared to some people were waiting for eight years because this fucking series just kept on getting put off and put off and people waited eight, eight years for this series to come out and I waited for a whole year being sort of obsessed with this series back when I was a kid. And then, now, you know, I go into self-improvement, I stop caring about stuff like that. And now, I'm older, and it's finally come out. I feel like I would be doing, 13-year-old me or 12, however old I was, a massive disservice if I didn't watch it. As in, I genuinely feel like 12-year-old me would want to punch me in the face. She waited for a year for this thing to come out, and I just decided, no, I'm not going to watch it because my pride is too high. And I, I genuinely think that 13-year-old me would have been heartbroken. I don't want to do that, you know? Everything that came before self-improvement could stay. That's a terrible philosophy, honestly. That's terrible. But let me tell you why I like this degenerate, because it is degenerate series. If you're a conservative, you would fucking hate this thing. But I wasn't raised as a conservative. I just kind of sort of became one as time went by. I'd realized that I related to a lot of stuff that the conservative influencers said. So I just kind of decided, you know what? Yeah, I, I probably am one of them then, because I agree with them on a lot. Now, again, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm more of a right-wing libertarian. You know, I'm not, I'm not some massive conservative. I'm not the world's best conservative either, as you can probably tell. I will say I have been known to misbehave quite often. I got a tattoo without my parents knowing. Obviously they figured it out later, but I got it without permission. And uh, that, that's about it actually. Maybe, maybe I don't misbehave as much as I thought I would. Anyways, that's not the point. I'm an absolute hooligan, a menace to society as you can clearly tell. Anyways, let me just tell you why I like this series so much. I mean, the only reason that I watched it was because younger me, I swear, I swear guys, I didn't watch this for any other reason. It's only because the younger me would hate current me if I didn't. Guys, I swear, please believe me. Anyways, well, I don't care if you believe me or not, because I don't care about people's opinions. I'm very cool and hip. I decided to watch this series because, again, 12-year-old me would probably start crying and want to beat me up if I didn't. You know, again, after waiting an entire year for it to come out, just ignoring it, forgetting about it. Oh my god, season one is out in one week. What? That's crazy. Because I got an email because I was subscribed to their email list and they basically never send emails out. But then they said, okay, season one's coming out soon. And I was just shocked because, again, I don't know why. I, I, at that point, I just gave it up, right? I convinced myself it would never happen. This series is just never coming out. But it did. So I watched it. And again, if you're a conservative, you would genuinely despise this series. And I am. I'm supposed to be conservative push, but, uh... Yeah, I, I kind of like this series, not going on. Episode 4 hit me right in the gut. It's episode 4, right? Hang on, let me check. There's three characters that I relate to in this series, which has actually led to me actually really liking the series because I relate to these characters. Alistair, Charlie, and surprisingly enough, Angel Dust. Let me tell you why. We'll start with the most out-of-pocket one. Why the hell do I relate to Angel Dust? It's simply the fact that he puts on a mask. Again, episode 4 fucking killed me. I swear to God, that, that episode made... I think, again, I think it was episode 4. Oh, that fucking killed me. And it made me confront some parts of myself that I really did not want to confront. You know when you pretend to be all obnoxious and loud, and I don't give a fuck about those people, they're nothing like me, I don't care about what they think of me. And in reality, just pretend, right? You pretend that everything's okay, oh my god, that episode fucking hurt. And I related to that on a spiritual level, I'm not gonna lie. When, you know when you make these offensive, because Angel this is an offensive guy, right? And I'm offensive too, in a, in a different way, obviously. But we're, we're both offensive characters. We do that and we put on a mask and we play this character as if we don't care. And we don't. I swear, I don't care. I don't actually care about your opinions. Please stop hating me. That's, that's what I relate to Angel Dust on. Honestly, that episode hit me right in the gut. He, he became my favorite character for all of two days just because of that one episode. Oh my god, that hurt. Any other characters? Charlie, she's a performer. She's ambitious. She's got big dreams. And it doesn't matter how ridiculous they are, she's gonna go after them. I relate to that on a spiritual level as well. Alistair, well, he's just cool, right? He listens to jazz. He's 19, 20s gentleman. How could you not like Alistair, right? He's the most likable character. And of course, I like him. Of course, the conservative. You know what? Again, I feel like if my fan base were to relate to any characters in the entire cast, it would be Alistair. Alistair's just really fucking cool. I have an entire Spotify playlist of Alistair's broadcast, just what I think he would like to listen to. And for the record, that is not why I bought this, guys. I swear that's not why I bought this umbrella. Actually, it's a luxury umbrella by Pissori. It costs 200 pounds. Yes, I did spend 200 pounds on a luxury umbrella. I don't know what. I, I just have expensive taste, guys. I swear, I just have expensive taste. I bought this for my Dying Performer character, right? I'm a musician, basically, in case you don't know. I'm a musician, and I play this character called the Dying Performer. 
which is one of one of my many many alter egos that I've made as a musician and as a songwriter. And uh, I wrote quite a couple songs inspired by Alistair, not gonna lie, because there are some cool fucking songs made by the fandom. There are some cool fucking songs. But yeah, those those are the three characters that I relate to the most in this series. Again, I swear I didn't buy it. It's really fucking cool, isn't it? I, it's, it's got a lion's head, right? It's, it's really fucking cool. It's handmade, by the way, handcrafted out of Italy. Anyways, that's not why I bought this. The reason that I bought this was because of the dying performer. And it just so happened that I thought this would fit the aesthetic. Alistair, he's a famous radio show host. Anyways, if you're watching this video as a Hasbro Zell fan and not a Helen Red fan, then, uh, well, at least we have something to agree on, right? I'm assuming that everybody watches that series disagree with me on quite a lot, especially concerning politics. It doesn't really matter, why don't we just focus on the stuff we agree on, by the way. Quick off-topic rants. I judge people based on their best qualities, and the way that I see it, you should judge actions, but you shouldn't judge people. What I mean by that, so basically, say there's this, this guy with a bunch of kids sitting in the bus, and the kids are being super loud and, and obnoxious, the kids are screaming all the time and shit, and it's really pissing you off. So sure, you could say it's annoying that that guy isn't telling his kids to shut up, but how could you call the guy a terrible person? How could you sit there and say, well, that guy, he must be really inconsiderate. What if his wife just died in the hospital? No, seriously. That guy could have just come back from the hospital after his wife died, and that's why his kids are being all loud, because their mother just died, and now he has to be a single father. And that's why he isn't paying attention, he's just letting his kids be loud, because he's not paying attention, because he's too busy mourning the fact that his wife just died. So would you really call him a terrible person after that? No, of course you wouldn't. But you don't know why he's doing the things that he is doing. So yes, you can sit there and say it's annoying that he's not telling his kids to shut up. That's an annoying action. But I wouldn't say he's a terrible person or he's an annoying person. Because again, we don't, we don't know why he's doing it, right? Again, let me tell you something. There are a lot of people that disagree with me on a lot of stuff, right? Especially the people I go to school with. But let me tell you something. I genuinely, if I was in your shoes, I would believe the same things that you believe. And I mean that deeply, by the way. Let me just be genuinely honest for a second. If you and I had the exact same life experiences, I saw the exact same stuff that you did, went through the exact same life path as you did, I'd probably be a liberal too. Shit, I would believe the exact same things that you believe. I'm a product of my life experiences and possibly a little bit of nature. You know what? I do believe that there's a little bit of nature involved, but I do believe it's mostly nurturing. Yes, there's a little bit of nature. You know, some people, I became an alcoholic because my father was an alcoholic, and the other person, I never drank alcohol because my father was an alcoholic. But both of those reactions stem out of the father being an alcoholic. If the father was an alcoholic, both those people would be wildly different. You know, maybe they would both drink a little bit, Neither would be addicted, and neither would be avoiding it. So yeah, it's a bit of nature. I, I do believe it's mostly nurture, I'll be honest with you. I genuinely do believe that. If we had the same life experiences, I would believe the exact same thing that you do. So how would- it would be disingenuous for me to sit here and say you're a terrible person because you disagree with me on this terrible person first, when I don't know your life story. I don't know your reasons for believing the things that you do. I sit here and say that you're a bad person for it. Again, I genuinely believe that if you and me had the exact same life experience, I would believe the same things you do. I really do think that. Now who's to say who's right, right? Of course you think you're right and I say I'm right. But who's to say, really? I think we're all just doing our best. Don't you? Anyways, rant aside, let's misbehave. Alistair's version is better than the original. The original is what Alistair would have actually heard in the 1920s. I love Hasbro Hotel. I really do. I love Hasbro Hotel. I know I probably shouldn't, but the way I see it, it's just a fictional series, right? It's not supposed to be an accurate representation of real life. Not that they would have been able to make one anyways, because everybody who worked on this is, I can guarantee you, they're atheists, right? They're all atheists. So of course they weren't trying to make an accurate representation of heaven and hell. Because they don't even believe in them. So how could they have tried to make an accurate representation? The way I see it, it's just a fictional series. It doesn't really matter. I'm not offended, you know? I don't get offended at much, to be honest. I don't get offended at anything, really. You can literally talk shit about me to my face, and I will continue to smile because there is power in a smile. Power. Immense power in a smile. Because if you just keep on smiling, then they don't have the power, you have the power. And you're never fully dressed without one. But, uh, Let's misbehave. I have been known to misbehave quite a bit, as you can tell by this and this. <laughs> Anyways, guys, the tattoo touch up. Yeah, I, I didn't record much of a vlog, not gonna be honest, I was too busy being mindfully present in the moment instead of getting my phone out to record like the normal people would do. <laughs> but listen, this is what it looks like now. I don't know if you can see it very well on camera. It looks fucking sick. It looks even cooler than it did before. Got some wisps of smoke added to the design and a couple more details that it didn't have before. I'll put up a picture on screen if you can't see it very well due to the lighting. Wait. Seriously, go check out that song, Radio Play. I relate to the lyrics in that song on a spiritual level. The lyrics on that song are fucking great. Like, they, they are quite simple, right? They're not the most complicated lyrics. But damn, I relate to those lyrics. Hang on, let me, let me find a real quick.
every time someone tried me in my pride i'd be richer than i am right now but i live a life so sublime all the fires on my side watch a flicker in my hand like wow this world is mine and jumping up the ladder is nothing but a matter of time when treachery and dreaming is just to never listen to rhyme and inclusion are just another reason to rhyme meh that, I relate to that because I'm a songwriter and when people fuck you over as a songwriter what do you do? you write a song about it I genuinely love this song though it's really great I love this song I find it very inspirational and relatable and I actually wrote a song of my own called Cinematic Lights inspired by this song and also just inspired by Alistair and my own character basically it's, it's like a mix of my own character and Alistair mixed into one song it's really good I think it's actually one of the best songs that I've ever written which is why I'm not going to put it out I'm not going to show it to anyone because it's too good I'm not going to show that song to anyone until it's completely finished see it, it genuinely this song is special probably the best song I've ever written and I wrote it while I was on vacation at my grandma's house on the piano late at night off schedule because I was on holiday right oh I'm with my grandma I'm on holiday right now it's fine I can go off schedule but I know a little bit Ridiculous, but come on, I, I had a flight there, I had a flight back, it was all- It was a whole thing. Seriously, check out this song, listen to the lyrics, the lyrics are so fucking good and relatable. This fell. <laughs> Brand new lyrics. Completely handmade, which means, I think, one of a kind. Which is really cool. <laughs> but yeah, I, I got back a couple days ago, back to school, back to all of that, back to the bullshit, back to the grind, back to the hustle, back to the never ending daily routines of having every single I'm losing my fucking mind. Anyways, not the point. You know what, self improvement is great. It is. I have nothing bad to say about it at all. I really don't. My mental health improved a lot. Everything improved. My entire life just improved once I got onto it. Really, there is no reason to be bitching and complaining about anything, ever, really. Because you have the power to change it. No matter the externals, you know, stoicism only focused on the internals and all, and all that. Doesn't mean you shouldn't care about stuff, obviously. But I feel like I don't need to tell you though, right? Guys, you guys ever danced the Charleston? Me and my grandma were doing the Charleston. Me and my grandma were doing the fucking Charleston back at my grandma's place for a while. I, I wish I got footage of that, honestly. It was so funny, it was so great. But yeah. All those 1920s. You know, Let's Misbehave was considered outrageous and scandalous back in the 1920s. That song is so tame. And now we've got fucking Lil Nas X twerking on the devil. Oh god, you know what I want to do? I want to make music like Let's Misbehave, you know? Stuff that would have been considered outlandish back in the 1920s, but by now, but my modern standards really isn't at all. I would actually love to make music like that. Anyways, moral of the story, I actually kind of like this series. It's actually really well written, it has a great score, a great soundtrack, a little bit degenerate, sure. Okay, very degenerate, but, but it sounds nice. It's a very, very nice score. It has a very nice soundtrack. I love the soundtrack. Some of those songs in there, I genuinely wish that I wrote myself because they're really great. You know, it, it, it's a talented group of people that I disagree with on basically everything, but they're very talented at making series and TV shows. And also, let's focus on what we have in common instead of what we don't, all right? I know I'm not going to change your own mind. You're not going to change mine, so what's the point, all right? Well, let's just get along. It's fine. It's fine. It is actually genuinely really well written. That being said, season 2 is coming out in another two years. Oh my god, well I suppose I already waited for three years, what's another two? Anyway, you know I will have changed some- oh my god, I'll be 18 years old. I will probably be 18 by the time that season 2 comes in. Wow, that's crazy to assume. I might even have graduated from college already. Damn. But I'm excited for that, you know, I'm excited because after college I can put all of- I can put all of my focus into my business, and make money, and all of that, and I don't have to go to school anymore. Well, I know I suppose a lot of people would be jealous of me if they knew that I went to school just to songwrite for a couple hours and then come back home. So I guess I am kind of blessed. I mean, there are a couple of boring lessons sprinkled in there, of course, of course, you know. School can never be 100% fun, but it is, it is pretty fun I'm doing it, going to music school. To be brutally honest, I have no idea what I'm doing. But I know exactly what I'm doing at the same time, if that makes any sense at all. Basically what I mean is I know that I know what's going to happen in the next couple years. I just don't know how long it's going to take. And it's only a matter of time before I climb up that ladder. It's just who I am. 
Just who I am as a person. Climbing up the ladder is only just a matter of time. God, I love that song. It's, it's a great song, it really is. And yes, David Bowie's Thin White Duke. It is completely possible to make great music while being a terrible person. I mean, just look at all the communist rock stars. Alright, alright, calm down, calm down, don't get offended, alright? My own personal take. Communism sucks. <laughs> Communism sucks! Anyways, uh, have a good one, guys. I think that's the end of the video. Have a good one. See the flag, it's still up, alright? It didn't fall down, so I'd say my weird crisscross way of taping it to the wall has actually worked. Would you look at that? Isn't it beautiful? I don't even think it's fully in frame, like that. Yeah. Isn't that sick? That's my own logo. Oh no, one and only edge. That's the band. Subscribe. New music coming out. Not on this channel. Well, I might, I might post it on this channel anyways. Go subscribe to my music channel as well. Links to everything in the description. Have a good one. Stay awesome. This is Helen Red. <laughs>